Oh yeah, uh, I've had a few people asking me about my uh, my room that I work in, uh, studio I suppose you call it. Uh, a few people are also wondering whether it's the front room of the house that I live in. Uh, my wife would never allow that, I'm afraid. So I got uh, I get kind of tipped into this little uh, little shed, which is a converted garage. Uh, but I'll uh, I'll give you a little look round and uh, see what you think. There's uh, there's nothing really that sparkling in here. It's all it's all cheap as chips and done on a real kind of budget. But uh, uh, I'll let you have a look, see what you think. Okay, so my studio really is just kind of based around a laptop, really. Uh, I did have a tower, but that broke, uh, as things do. And now I'm just working off laptop. And that really is kind of powerful enough to kind of do what I want to do. I suppose, in a sense, it helps kind of limit the number of tracks and things that I want to use. So kind of having limits in there makes me think a little bit harder about the fewer things I can use and, and, and come up with ideas that way. Uh, over here I've got uh, an analogue desk that I was hoping to kind of get get involved in being used. I've, I've had it probably about eight, eight months, 12 months, but as you can see it's turned out to be a better table than a recording desk. Uh, I was going to hook it up to the, to the Mac, but due to Apple and their brilliance kind of changing their USBs and Firewire and stuff, uh, all my Firewire gear that I did have, which allowed me to have kind of multiple ins and outs, which would have plugged into this desk wonderfully, I've had to kind of hone down to this single two in and two out audience thingy here, which in a way is great. I mean, it limits me on what I can do, but again, I think limitations are really useful for kind of getting the best out of out of what you're doing musically because you're not thinking about technology you just kind of you're working with what you've got and and hey ho that's it uh so you think about music rather than technical stuff uh my monitors here and i've got some little uh interesting things about stealing nothing is original steal from anywhere that resonates with inspiration or fuels your imagination see i do like the idea of that uh I've got some, uh, these are my monitors as I was saying, there's my view outside the front, the van, and there's my other monitor, the microphone here, that I keep covered up, bit of an Elvis job, I only really use one microphone, that's that one, uh, everything gets recorded via that, that needs recording via a microphone, such as the, uh, wee -hee -hee, bit of that, uh, guitar has just been stored in this corner at the moment, it should in reality be over here in the guitar rack, uh, which, that's where it should live. Uh, the bass, also my favourite bass. My little squire bass with, I'm sure you've noticed, but I've got a sponge underneath there. Flat wound strings, horrible dead sound. Nice and dark. Perfect for that kind of, uh, that 60s kind of vibe, especially the uh, that kind of motown th thump. Uh, cheap, cheap bass, cheap as chips. Here's my guitar. This is just a Harley Benton, which is from Toman. I think that was less than uh, 90 quid. 90 quid. Bloody hell, and I've made two albums on that to now and some singles. Can't grumble, can you? A drum kit for when my neighbours go uh, when they move out. They move out to Spain every uh, every winter. That means I can get the drum kit out and record some real drums. Congas. And bongos were acting as shelves. Yes, <coughs> sorry, I was saying that these bongos and congas are actually acting as shelves here. I don't know if you can see that. Wonderful tuning fork. Mm -hmm. How nice. Anyway, here we go. Here's my shelves. I, I tend to use this as acoustic treatment. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening, but my, my camera phone keeps, uh, phone camera even, <laughs> keeps cutting out and, and stop filming. So I'm having to kind of do it in, in little bits. Uh, where well, we got to, we've been to the congas, we've seen the conga shelves. Uh, have we seen the drums? I think we've seen the drums. Seen my guitars and here's my shelves with other percussive devices on there. Stands for things. Uh, clicky bangy things. Things on the floor. Hidden amplifiers with things. Oh, shaky things down here. Everywhere you go there's a shaky thing. Of course my kids love it. Is that going to stand there? Uh, and then we've got the piano. Uh, all instruments in the in the house uh, double up as shelves, as you can see. It's quite quite good. 
uh, maybe IKEA should move into making instruments that double up into shelves. More shaky stuff. CDs from buddies of mine who've been making albums and stuff. Oh, nice get well card there. Put that on there. Pictures of the wife and the kids. Basil plant wanting a bit of water. Poor old thing. And here we have the outside view of M Towers. Not looking too shabby. Looking a bit rainy though. Uh, Amazon. We'll review with our Amazon. Uh, cables. Masks. Stock. Plenty of uh, CDs there. Uh, albums. No, no. Albums. CD albums. Singles. More CD albums. Stuff falling down the back of my shelves. Budgers. Get your Andre M. Budgers. What we got down here? There we go, look. Another Andre M. Budge. Stop thief toilet budge. Oh, I've gone down the back again. I'll get that in a minute. And uh, now we've got just kind of posters and stuff like that. And CDs I've done with other bands that I've been a part of. And there's a nice M. Set one, look. Uh, Andre M one there, and I haven't got a stop thief one up yet. Let's do that sometime. Uh, and here is the wonderful stand I use to uh, put myself when I'm doing these splurges. You can see it's a right little scruffy hole down this side. Printer, tuner, gloves, tingly hands. Headphones so when uh, I'm trying to work a bit quieter and not upset anybody. Uh, and I think that's it. <coughs> oh, this is the keyboard that I tend to use. Uh, as you know, I'm not uh, I'm not really a keyboard player, but it's something I've been kind of teaching myself and learning. Uh, I'm currently trying to learn how to play Green Onions two-handed. So that's that, I'm getting there. And then, of course, we've got But, oh, I'm not even showing things, was I? But I can't really play it for you, was with. <coughs> so, I don't know what's going off, but the camera on my phone is really kind of mucking about at the moment. So, I was going to, I'd started just kind of playing a little bit of Green Onions for you, showing you how I'm kind of learning it. Uh, uh, so I thought I'd just uh, give you a quick blast anyway. It ain't great, but it's getting there. I kind of see it as a, a three-year project. This is the bit I always struggle with. See, it's because I'm doing it on camera, isn't it? But uh, it's getting there, and it's fab to play. Hey. Enjoyed that. <laughs>